Here we're going to demonstrate a pulmonary artery catheter. Uh, this is a device that's often used in critical care settings um, to gather some values regarding cardiac output, also looking at systemic vascular resistance and looking at pulmonary artery pressures. It also allows us to get mixed venous blood gas samples um, to assess um, oxygenation and perfusion uh, and essentially uh, tissue use of oxygen. So a pulmonary artery catheter has to be fished through a cordis. So this is called a cordis. It's a central line. It's a single lumen central catheter. Uh, and what happens is that we insert this device here that is a pulmonary artery catheter or also called a swan gans into this cordis. So what we do here is Physicians will fish this device through. Most of the time, patients come out of the operating room with such a device already in place. Um, but they will fish this entire line through the heart, through the right atrium, the right ventricle, and the tip will end up all the way into the pulmonary artery. There are measurements here on the catheter. A thick line here is actually 50 centimeters, whereas one small line is 10 centimeters. Therefore, as they fish this device through into the heart, they will find their measurements. So here, once they re reach this level, they will be at 40 centimeters, all the way now to 50 centimeters. They will fish the device through all the way until they've reached um, the pulmonary artery, and that once they inflate a balloon that's at the tip of this device, um, once this balloon will occlude the pulmonary artery, they know that they have gone far enough. Um, and that's when they will stop and they will lock this uh, catheter into place. This piece here is connected to any IV uh, tubing. So if we're infusing normal saline or Ringer's lactate, it will be connected to a regular IV tubing. And this will be used as uh, IV therapy for the patient. Um, oftentimes, there is any medication such as vasopressors um, so vasoconstricting agents or inotropic agents will actually be delivered in this line. Now the pulmonary artery catheter works, um, has essentially five different lumens. Um, I will go one by one through the different lumens. This one here is called the thermodilution um, catheter it, or the thermodilution line. It's actually connected, this piece here, when we open it up, is connected to uh, our monitor, our cardiac monitor. Um, and this is the device, this is the way that the monitor will receive the different uh, values and we will be able through an algorithm to provide us our hemodynamic parameters like the cardiac output. So the way that this catheter actually works is through thermodilution. We'll talk about this after once we discuss cardiac output. The yellow line that you can find here Yellow is usually always related to pulmonary artery. So this is a, uh, the line here that connected to the transducer will actually connect the pulmonary artery pressure. So you will have a systolic and a diastolic the same way that you would have an arterial blood pressure with the arterial line. So this will provide us with the pulmonary artery pressure and out of this um, three-way stopcock we would actually be able to do a blood sample of a mixed venous blood sample. Um, in order to essentially get a blood sample uh, from both the superior vena cava and inferior vena cava where this blood has mixed in the heart and has now moved towards the, uh, the pulmonary vasculature. Um, this will really give us a good overview of how much oxygen was used um, in our entire blood um, through a full, essentially through a full cycle through, through, the, through the body. The next line here that we have has essentially a connection, um, has a syringe that connects to it. Um, so here, if I'm straight like this, that means this line is open at the moment. This is a syringe, it's just a three uh, milliliter syringe, but this one's special that I can't pull down any further because it has a maximum of 1.5 milliliters of air in it. Um, and these come with the sets, the pulmonary artery sets, where this is already in place. What it does is as I push air into this syringe, the tip of my pulmonary artery catheter has an actual balloon. I'll demonstrate on a different catheter that has a functioning balloon. So 
So as I press to put air with the syringe, you will see the balloon inflate. That balloon will completely occlude the pulmonary artery. And what will happen is as we hold this in place, opened, and occluding the pulmonary artery, we will be able to see on our monitor that the, the line that was initially demonstrated pulmonary artery pressure will actually just have a bit of a flat line since we've occluded it. And what that flat line will essentially give us is as the tip of this catheter, there is uh, essentially a sensor that is giving us um, a pressure that's reflective of the pressure in the left side of the heart. So as we take a CVP, a central venous pressure, or right atrial pressure, it gives us a pressure in the right side of the heart. But as we do this wedge pressure or occlusion pressure, we will actually get the left atrial pressure, so the pressure in the left side of the heart. Um, and so that will give us an idea if it, the left ventricle is functioning well, if it's able to eject properly compared to the right side. You might have um, a right-sided heart failure versus a left-sided heart failure, and this is a way to diagnose that. So that's the purpose of this line here, is to inflate the balloon to get an occlusion pressure, or also called a wedge. Um, now, the one safety measures when it comes to nursing care is that after that you've inflated the balloon, you must ensure that you've completely deflated the balloon and that you've locked the catheter to ensure that the balloon does not accidentally get reinflated. You should actually remove the air completely from that syringe when you reconnect because you would not want the balloon to stay open and to actually cause necrosis to the pulmonary artery as um, necrosis will obviously make the pulmonary artery blow and um, is deadly, essentially. We have a fifth lumen that we call it here. It's a um, right, auxiliary, right atrial uh, proximal um, type of lumen where this is actually just used for any type of infusion. So if you wanted to connect um, you know, a furosemide um, drip or any just normal saline and antibiotic, et cetera. This could be used for any uh, IV fluids um, that could go through this line here. Now, the other lumen here that we have that is blue, so blue is related to the central venous pressure. Um, and so this, this line here not only has the tubing that we discussed previously with the triple lumen, or any other central line. So you have the tubing here for the central venous pressure connected to your transducer. Um, so you can measure a CVP through this device, but you can also have this syringe, which is called a cardiac output syringe, so that we may measure cardiac output. The way that we measure cardiac output is through a process I would call thermodilution. So this syringe is connected to a bag of normal saline that is at room temperature. Now this bag, we will fill our syringe of t with 10 milliliters of this, uh, of this fluid, of this room temperature fluid. And once we have this syringe filled, we will end up pr pushing it into our patient. Now the way that we're gonna get an actual value for cardiac output is because we've connected this piece here to our monitor and it is currently uh, measuring the core body temperature. So the computer or the monitor through an algorithm will actually detect how much time it takes for the fluid at room temperature that we pushed into the right atrium of our patient, how long it will take to warm up to the body's core temperature. The faster it warms up, the better the cardiac output because the blood is circulating faster and it warms up quicker. So essentially the slower the blood warms up, that means the lower your cardiac output. So when we are to inject our cardiac output for our patients, there are on our monitor, there are different buttons that we need to press to go and start our cardiac output process, but essentially you would take 10 milliliters of water, and then at the end of expiration, where there's no pulm intrapulmonary pressures that are affecting the patient's heart, we would just go and push very hard um, that 10 milliliters of water, and it will go through the entire catheter and be essentially ejected uh, at one point in our port into the right atrium. Um, we normally do about three measures of this to get an average, and that average will essentially give us our cardiac output, 
and we will automatically be able to connect through our monitor the cardiac index, which is based on body surface area. Um, and it will also provide us with the systemic vascular resistance of our patients just to get a better sense if our patients are very vasodilated or very vasoconstricted and what treatment would be best for these patients if they require any vasopressors, vasodilators, or inotropic agents to help with the contractility of the heart.